In yesterday's video, we've investigated a star by the name of J1407, and it's an unusual planet that had a tremendously large rings. Now, I decided to actually try to recreate that system in Universe Sandbox 2, and today we're going to play around with Universe Sandbox 2 and try to maybe create something that's very similar to what we saw in Space Engine yesterday. Now, what I've discovered is that this star actually is present in the game, but its rings are not, so we're going to have to make them manually. Welcome to What the Math, and enjoy the video. <laughs> And we're going to start by essentially just creating a new simulation. This was just me playing around with various um, SWASP stars because there's actually quite a lot of various stars and planets that this particular telescope has discovered. And if you type one SWASP, you'll discover a huge amount of different uh, gas giants and stars and red dwarfs, brown dwarfs and so on. But we're only looking for one. We're looking for the one called J1407. And you'll notice that there's actually five choices that come up. And it, I think this is actually a mistake because I think three of these are exactly the same thing. This is actually the same um, planet that we saw yesterday. This is the brown dwarf. And these two are the stars. And I think that these are just sort of differently named stars, but they're actually the same thing. Um, this is an orange star. Um, its spectral type is K5. So it's a little bit less bright than our sun, but it's um, almost the same size as our sun. It's about 90% mass. And the planet here is a little bit less massive than it was in Space Engine. So let's actually just see. We're going to uh, try to add the whole system, but I don't think it's going to add the planet. Yeah, it's not going to add the planet even if I choose this. Yeah. And the other thing is that you'll notice that for some reason, even though it says star here, it doesn't actually appear to be a star in, in this particular simulation. Um, which means that, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's actually about 10 times less massive than it should be. And wait, what is what is that? Oh, it did add a planet. Okay, so it did add one of the planets here. So it actually does add the whole thing. It just doesn't, unfortunately, add the, uh, the rings. So this is what this system would look like without the rings. We can actually see the distance here. Yeah, the distance is correct. And let's just check its orbital period. It should be about 12-ish years. And it doesn't actually show the orbital period, but we're going to uh, do this from scratch because I don't really want this to be a gas giant. This is supposed to be a star that is 10 times more massive. So I think this is actually possibly a little bug or a small mistake that the developers of this game um, forget to change. And so this should be 90% of the sun, not 10% of the sun. So here we go. We're going to change this and now it's become a star that it's supposed to be. We're also going to erase this planet for a second and replace it with our own manually added planet. So let's just take one of these J1407b planets and add it at a distance of about 8 astronomical units. I'm going to correct this in a second by going into motion here and making sure that its orbital period is set to approximately 12 years. And here we go. 11.7 years. That's close enough. Uh, this actually for some reason went supernova, so we're going to change its name just to regular one swasp um, J1407, and here you go. So we now have our uh, star, which is about 90% mass of the sun. It's um, a K-type star. It's it's an um, orange medium-sized star, and we have our gas giant by the name of J1407b that is lacking one major feature, and that of course is or are the massive rings, which are going to be approximately 0.6 astronomical units in size. So here we go. How do we add the rings? Well, you're going to add, scroll down to rings, and well, here you can kind of pick which, which ones you want. These are basically presets, but we're just going to pick Saturn rings, and just to kind of show you what this looks like, let's make the outermost ring first. Um, there's actually quite a lot of rings, um, and basically some of them have gaps between them, but uh, what we know is that there's a central sort of thick area with a lot of rings that basically make it almost impenetrable to sunlight, and that's going to be really hard to recreate without melting my computer. And then there's other rings that go to about distance of about 60% astronomical units or 90 million kilometers. But because in uh, the simulation yesterday I showed you that uh, these rings were actually not aligned with the plane, but sort of like lay on under an angle here, we're going to do that by um, flipping this planet to its side a little bit, basically doing this. And now uh, we're going to add the rings to it, maybe a little bit more. Here we go. Now let's add the rings 
by going into Saturn rings and changing this distance to first ring is going to be 0.5 to about 0.6 astronomical units. And let's just see what this is going to look like if we add it to this body right here. And there we go. So that's our first ring. Looks pretty good, I think. Kind of what we, almost like we, what we saw yesterday. There might be not as bright because I didn't actually change the colors. But I want this to be more realistic rather than um, more visually appealing. So the rings are here. Let's add the next ring. This is going to be about 0.4 to 0.5. So there's going to be a bit of a gap between them and to make the gap I'm going to make this actually 4.8 astronomical units and this will create our second ring around this planet and boom there we go so the, now there's a slight gap right in between the rings I don't know if you can kind of see it but let's there we go there's a uh, gap right there and uh, there's a second ring right after it now let's just actually change the color mode to random and see what this is going to do because uh, I just want to see if it actually affects the visual look of this uh, this particular ring. But next ring is going to be 0.3 to about 0.38 and this is our next ring. And so now we have three rings around this beautiful gas giant. And ring number four is going to be a little bit closer to the middle. And so now, after the next gap, we know that there's going to be like a huge, very thick sort of um, amount of material that essentially prevents the sunlight from um, reaching Earth. And this is something that's going to be a very, very thick ring. So any, everywhere between uh, zero astronomical units to about 0 0.2 is essentially just going to be a very thick cloud which we're going to do by doing the following we're going to add one and i guess there you have it i kind of changed the colors a little bit just to make it a little bit more visually appealing so we have this very very thick um almost like a plate like ring around the planet almost uh essentially almost touching the atmosphere of the planet then if, as you zoom out there is a few uh, rings with gaps in between them and this is essentially where scientists believe that there's possibly moons there so we're going to just go and do that we're going to add a few moons here just to make this a little bit more realistic so let's go into moons select a random moon and place a bunch of them in this location now another way of doing this um, and if you actually want to make this more realistic and more accurate go back into the ring settings here and change the number of particles to zero, change the number of bodies to one or as many as you want, and then change this, bodies instead of particles. Uh, choose the distance for these gaps that you had, and then add a ring, and voila, there's our moon number one. We have our first moon orbiting in this gap right here, and this is what this moon looks like. As you can see, my computer is already sort of slowing down. That's because things are getting a little bit hectic with the amount of stuff that's present in the simulation. There's several thousands of different um, ring particles and now that we have our moons as well, if they start colliding into things, things will be a little bit more hectic. So let's add a few more moons and see how this looks. And for the sake of simplicity, I've decided to only add three moons, but basically this is what we currently think is happening in this particular system. Uh, there is essentially a gas giant, a super, super massive gas giant in the middle with a huge amount of material orbiting around it. This material, as I mentioned in the previous video, is about um, one mass of Earth, possibly even more than one mass of Earth. Basically, if you were to grind up Earth and to make it into a pancake, that's about 0.6 astronomical units large. This is what you would create. And in between these three gaps, or actually there's more than three gaps, but in between these ring gaps, we have these moons that have essentially been generated by the condensing material as it sort of accumulates um, orbiting around this gas giant. And so this is how our Galilean moons were born as well. So Io, Callisto, uh, Titan, and all of the other uh, gas giant um, moons, famous satellites of gas giants, have been essentially created in a very similar way. Now, you may notice that this actually looks like our moon. That's because it is our moon. It's just this, is, uh, this game actually decides to place... Earth moons instead of other randomly generated moons if you go into the ring and you decide to add, um, if you decide to change this number of bodies and uh, bodies instead of particles. It doesn't actually auto-generate randomly generated moons like it usually does. Anyway, so that's essentially how the system um, looks like. This is what it would look like if you were to try to approach this system with a space spacecraft and... Um, 
from our planet Earth, this is what we actually see. We see uh, this gas giant passing in front of the star and we see these dims of light as the rings essentially block the, the actual um, sunlight or starlight. And then we, we get to do uh, we get to see this twice because this is because obviously the rings are similar on both sides. Now, um, as I mentioned before, the scientists actually want you to go and take a look at it and keep looking at it. And if you see these dims, report it right away. And um, if you want to actually try to make this yourself, it's not very difficult. Just follow the steps that I described in this video and you will have your own J1407B as well. And before we finish this video, let's actually just do something really silly and funny and interesting. Let's actually just place Earth right next to it and see what happens. Uh, we're going to place Earth at a distance of about, I don't know, let's just say 300,000 kilometers, which is basically the distance of Moon from Earth, um, right about here. Let's pause the game for a second. We're going to slow this down and let's just see what happens to our beautiful planet. Now, so if this supermassive gas giant was at the same distance as our moon is to us, this is what you would actually see if you were to stand somewhere in Europe. And a lot of people have been asking me, how do you stand on the surface? It's by pressing C button. C button is essentially what allows you to stand on the surface. And look at this beautiful view, oh my lord. Now here's the thing though, because this is so massive, uh, chances are our planet would actually disintegrate right now and you would possibly be sucked into this gas giant. But the view though, the view would be totally worth it. This is what the massive, ultra massive ring system looks like from the surface of our planet. Now, uh, because Earth is simulated a little bit different in this game, I don't think we'll be actually be seeing um, the massive drops in temperature or anything else for that matter. But I, I would like to actually try something. I want to see if I can... I would like to actually enable tidal heating and possibly tidal evolution and uh, see what happens to our planet then. So right now, because of the amount of tidal heating or I guess tidal forces that it gets from this humongous gas giant that we're next to, it should technically be receiving a huge, huge amounts of heat. Now, if this was a normal non-Earth planet, it would pretty much be melting right now. But because, like I said, um, Earth has a very different sort of calculations going on here. It's actually a very unique object in Universe Sandbox 2. I don't think we're going to see anything here. Yeah, Earth will be actually just fine. Let's actually, just for fun, place another randomly generated planet on the other side. We're going to place a random rocky planet on the other side. And this is a planet called Pikiona. Here's Pikiona. Oh, look at that. It actually kind of almost looks like Earth. And let's just watch what happens to Pikiona because it is going to get a ridiculous amount of tidal heating. You can see its temperature going up exponentially high. Uh, so Pikiona is unfortunately going to possibly melt. And uh, it's really, really close to this gas giant. And so we can kind of stand on the surface here, admire the view as the temperature, the surface temperature of this planet starts to increase to the point where it actually melts. You can, you'll see the, this change in colors in a, in a few seconds. We're at 1500, 1600 degrees Celsius. And you can kind of start seeing it glow here. And as we're basically watching this humongous ring system, we will start seeing this. Oh, also that we have a, our gas giant rise right now. Uh, there we go. We can start seeing, we start, uh, we're seeing the, the actual glow increase right now. So uh, that's essentially because of the humongous tide effect, tidal effects formed on the surface and underneath this planet because of the um, tremendous gravitational forces of this huge gas giant that's about 14 times larger than Jupiter. And that's why this planet is now a molten planet. Earth, however, is doing fine. I'm pretty sure if I go back to Earth, it is just doing, it's doing okay. Uh, Alright, so that's essentially all I wanted to show you in this particular video. I wanted to recreate this really cool system. And my apologies for making this last part of the video in like 8 frames per second. And that's because um, because of the amount of rings um, and various particles in the ring system that's sort of orbiting around this gas giant. That's essentially why this game is so ridiculously slow right now. But if I were to go in here and if I were to... Oh, sorry, not in here. If I were to go into powers and essentially just delete all fragments and all dusticles and uh, dusticles, particles and dust, the game would suddenly be fast again. We're back to like 70 frames per second. 
Um, and that's um, that's all I wanted to kind of show you in this particular video. I just wanted to show you what the system looked like. And let's actually just for fun um, slow down our planet. Total velocity decreased. And we're going to re-enter the gas giant. So we're basically going to end this video with a big explosion of our home planet Earth colliding with this beautiful gas giant J1407b. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new about space science and possibly a little bit of math as well while watching all of my videos. If you enjoyed these videos, please subscribe and also share these videos with your friends. Don't forget to like it if you actually enjoyed it and comment uh, on anything that you've learned that is interesting to you or if you actually know some other facts about the system that I haven't mentioned in these videos. Also, don't forget to check out some of the other um, Universe Sandbox or Space Engine videos. Don't forget to check out some of the other History of Space Flight videos. And you know what? Be awesome, stay positive, and keep learning about life. Because life is fun, so is space, and so is science. Alright, here we go. We're about to collide. I hope... Ooh, it's accelerating. It's getting more intense. Are we going to touch the surface of this uh, gas giant? Or are we going to actually fly past it? No, come on. Ah, oh, you're supposed to collide. What is wrong, you planet? I need to go back here, I guess. Okay, time to cheat a little bit, and let's see if we can just change the... There... Oh! Oh, I cheated too badly. Hey, look at that. This is kind of cool. It passed by the surface, scratched the surface of this gas giant, and uh, created a tremendous amount of fragments that will now actually create yet another rain around this gas giant. And for all we know, maybe that's actually what happened to some of the uh, moons of Jupiter or Saturn that we have today. Maybe they actually did th uh, the same sort of maneuver and created these particles that then turn into rings. Oh, and there we go. It is now officially part of G1407b. Rest in peace, Earth. Thank you for everything. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later, and bye-bye.